mean the writing of the song, or generally the inspiration. The writing of the song. Um, I'll try and tell you, these guys will correct me if I'm wrong. In, a, in an absolute second. But I think... Uh, <laughs> I think we were we were we were actually jamming as as a as a as a five piece. Uh, Nymph was on uh, drums, and Nigel was playing keyboards, and I was playing bass. Superbly, I mean. Oh. And um, I, I think Doug, Doug had written this um, um, like arpeggio uh, part um, uh, quite a bit before, and uh, you know, I said that's all right, man. I'm going to use that sometime, and. Um, I think Paul came up with a with a heavy thing, and then Nips came up with some different things, and we just put it all together. And we basically we're, we're at, actually we're quite into prog rock, so we actually wrote the song as a bit of a prog rock thing. And the middle part, I don't know if you've noticed, but it's a bit yes like, you know, it's a bit like a yes song. And um, I was quite influenced by Chris Squire when I played bass in the early days. So we were just having fun, jamming really, weren't we? And um, you know, we, can, we came up with the idea of making that into the song about the, the fall of communism. So, I think we've got that on the film as well, because you know we've done this massive um, TV documentary in England, and I think we have footage of us actually writing that song, which might end up on a DVD. Yeah. It's a good question. No, 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 never. No, no, it's, um, it's a strange thing, really. Well, I try to be. I mean, sometimes, sometimes when you're uh, when the guitars are really loud, it can sometimes make you fall over. It's like, it makes you balance and your ears go funny. <laughs> it's the same thing that makes you sing in tune. Yeah? It's the balance thing, it's pitch thing. So that can be a bit strange sometimes. So if I ever do sing that tune, blend the guitarists again. And if we ever play out Yes, <laughs> <laughs> for whistling. Yeah. Uh, I don't really know, actually. I, unless you like sort of Metallica or Maiden or bands that are considered mainstream, you know, that, that, that TV people can play on TV and they think it's safe. You know, I, I think. It's good to have one. It's all, if you have a single, I think you should have a video to match it. And you know, we, we tend to use MySpace and YouTube and iTunes for these things anyway. So, yeah, that, that's where you got it from, and it's free. Yeah, and you can go on YouTube or on iTunes, or you, you know, MySpace or any of those things, and you can see the new video. We we didn't really make it for uh, you know MTV or something, although. If they get watched enough on YouTube, they end up on MTV anyway, or, or Korean TV, uh, TV isn't it? So, um, we are getting quite a lot of airplay on, on the new album, uh, Around the Planet. So things are, are definitely looking a lot better, as far as videos go. We've actually made another video for Can You Feel the Power, which is, uh, which is going to be out soon. And we're just making the video for uh, um, I've Got to Rock to Stay Alive. Lemmy singing and Angry from Rose Tattoo and uh, Andy from Halloween. So that's going to be filmed around the world in Australia and Tenerife. So that's going to be cool if it ever gets together. I think we're getting four singers together to do that sort of thing is really difficult. But uh, but that's our, ne our next project we're working on. Yeah. Um, I don't have. I like it because it speeds everything up, you know, everything's so fast. It's just, just all about communication, really. It can take money off bands, it really can. I think it's fantastic for new bands to have a MySpace site, and then you, they get like 33,000 hits or something, and then a record company goes, oh. <laughs> so it's great for that. Um, I, think, I think bands like ourselves have to have great packaging. So you can download the album for free, but you buy the album as well. That, that's the secret to it, I think. That's why we have like, you know, discs and digipacks and things. It's all the record company package and things. So the download for free thing doesn't hurt the bands as much as it, as, you, as it can do. I'm sure the bigger the band though, the worse it is. You know what I mean? I mean, I know Metallica spent, particularly the drummers spent millions trying to stop it. And I, I don't think you can stop that. 
and should have. Yeah, well, it's the same, yeah. I mean, yeah, you're right. People always do like uh, music. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's all right. I mean, you know, what do you want? If, if you have a million people download your, your album, you have a million fans, right? The fact that they didn't pay for it, for us, doesn't matter because we'll go and play to them anyway, you know. You know, you can't get into a concert for free, can you? I just think that it, it, it's a double-sided sword, you know. I think when you're filthy rich, it really pisses you off. It doesn't really piss us off, because we're not filthy, filthy rich. And like I say, if a million people download it for free, great. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, and a million people might buy the real one, yeah, so... So that, that's really how the internet helps us, and I, and I think it's fantastic for young bands. In fact, the, 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 the band that are supporting us in England, uh, we found them on YouTube. Mm -hmm. so, no, I don't think there's a problem, no. I mean, too much choice? Yeah. No, I don't think so. I think the more choice, the better. I think if some, if some young guy buys In a Sanctum and then goes out and buys Wheels of Steel, that's great. Actually, and they're all in all the shops, aren't they? I mean, you know, so I, I think, I mean, we find, actually, we find, it's like yesterday, we played in Mythic, and we had lots of, of, of teenage fans in the front, and actually, they prefer the old songs. So it's not always as it seems yet, you know, life's not, oh, the, the young fans like the new albums, and the old fans like the old, it's not like that. You would think it would be like that, but actually it's not. You know, we get a lot of a lot of fans singing Wheels of Steel and Princess of the Night, just like this saying, uh, you know, can you feel the power? So I think a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of new fans are getting into the back catalogue of Maiden, Motorhead, Priest, big time, definitely. And they're great albums from the 80s, aren't they? They are great albums. So it's good. It's good if uh, you know if people uh, join the family, and um, you know. I think I baptized some people yeah, yesterday. Yeah, I baptized yeah. some fans yesterday. With the water. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, we have it with us all the time when we do big gigs. We had it last year at the Evolution. Yeah, yeah uh, Shaker, oh, Evolution. Yeah, yeah Bakken. We do take it uh, all over the place. We just had it in Sheffield for the, for the documentary we made. Uh, so it is there, obviously. The, the problem is, one of the big problems with the eagle is the power. It, it pulls a lot of power. So if you take it to small venues, it, it can fit in, but then you need generators to run it. You know, so it's quite powerful. It's got, I don't know how many aircraft lights it has, but it has a lot of, uh, I think it's about 50 or 60,000 watts, you know, so it's a big, it's a big piece of electricity. So, um, but yeah, we, we like to take it with us. but. We don't want to use it all the time because then it spoils it. You know, if, if you see it everywhere, it spoils the effect, you know. I think on the next big festival we're gonna we're getting into projection. Uh, back projection. You know, pictures and things. So we are moving more towards it. You all have to go to Vacan anyway to see us. <laughs> I think a lot of Italians go. I think a lot of Italians go to Vacan though. You're everywhere, yeah. <laughs>